Warning, the show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. This show is produced by Geek Happy Network, constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts. This is Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here is my co-host, Angel. And today is the th- final part of the Eid part. Oh my god, can I try that again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take two. My eyes just like <laughs> so over. The rendang is finally catching up to me. <laughs> rendang's yeah, revenge. Just don't eat meat tomorrow. It's like it's good for you. Oh yeah, I could totally do that. He's not gonna do it. Nope. <laughs> I've, I've just been. I've eating, been vegetarian like, before. I lasted a meal. <laughs> well, like a day. If you round it up. Day. I nope. can't be a vegetarian. All right, take two. Take two. <laughs> Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here is my co-host, Angel. And today we still have Bianca. Yay! <laughs> I'm Our... not being held hostage. I'm no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Our resident um, expertise or. Knowledgeable Ex- person in Professor <laughs> Professor Bianca, <laughs> master of the Eids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Without Bianca, I'd be calling it Eid the whole time. <laughs> and I'd be like, "Yeah, what he said." <laughs> yeah. Eid. 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 And today Eid. we're covering the last of the three-part series where we cover the e- the Eid of all Eids, Eid Al Adha, the Greater Eid. If you're new to the show, this is the third part of a three-part series where we cover the holidays of Islam. So you could listen to this first, but we do suggest going back to the first part after where we cover Ramadan and the Eid al-Fitr. We'll put a link the good one. of the That's episode. The sweet one. The sweet one, yeah. yeah. We'll put a link <laughs> of the episodes in the description for you so you could go there right after. Or first. Or first, yeah. So to recap, Eid al-Fitr was the lesser Eid. It had a lot of food, mostly sweets. It also comes after a whole month of fasting, which is Ramadan. Now, <laughs> before we go into Eid al-Adha, we will cover again when exactly Eid al-Adha is, because just like Ramadan, it does not happen on the same day every year, as it follows mm. the lunar calendar. For people who haven't listened to the first episode, the lunar calendar follows a different rotation cycle? and cycle, rotation? yeah, <laughs> compared to the solar calendar, which most of us use. So the solar calendar follows the sun and how the Earth travels around around it it, while the lunar calendar follows the moon and how the moon moves around the earth this results into about 11 days difference between the two calendars that means that Eid al-Adha that means that Eid al-Adha does not (laughs) happen on the same day every year thank you angel for the demonstration this is the sun (laughs) (laughs) this is the earth this is the year solar year yep I don't have anything that looks like a moon. So there you go. Uh, you, do. you do. Yeah. So, I don't think you want asset. to moon us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't have any. Yeah. Okay. No. Not on my desk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Eid al Adha, the celebration, happens on the moon sighting of the 10th day of the last month of the lunar calendar, which is called Du al Hija. H J J A H. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> he said. <laughs> I'm stumped too. So this is Dun also. Hija, yeah. yeah. Uh, the 10th day of the lunar calendar of Du al Hija is also the ending of the annual holy pilgrimage of Hija. This pilgrimage doesn't really have. isn't like super related to Eid al Adha. The way Ramadan is related to Eid al-Fatir, but they're kind of still, you know, they're like distant cousins. 
<laughs> but we will spend a little bit of time covering the pilgrimage because it is quite an important part of Islam as it is one of the five pillars, just like giving alms or fasting during Ramadan as we've covered in this series. The pilgrimage itself, or the pillar itself, asks that each able-bodied Muslim who could afford to do it must complete the pilgrimage to the Mecca in Saudi Arabia at least once in their life. Now, Mecca is an important location for Muslims because this is where it's said that Muhammad was lived and it is one of the holiest Actually, I think it is the holiest place for Islam. As a side note, if you notice the month where all of this happens, it's called Dual Hijjah. As it translates, it translates to the month of the pilgrimage. So it's quite literal. <laughs> this is the month you go for the pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is... Yeah. Well, I was going to say snacks! <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pilgrimage itself lasts about three days when you upon arrival to Mecca, and it's quite eventful. It includes throwing rocks at pillars, walking and praying to a shrine that's believed to have been built by Muhammad himself. And after pilgrim completing the pilgrimage, you're also believed to be reborn as a new baby, free of all sin. Every year, over a million Muslims take on this pilgrimage. But there's not really a lot of food-related things in this pilgrimage, which is why we're not really covering this, and we're not having this as a separate part, because we are here for the food, and the thing that has food is the Eid al-Adha. What kind of food? Thing? Yeah. Um, well, before, I'll <laughs> just add, I forgot to... Yeah. Ramadan. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, But I did forget to add that with the pilgrimage here, it doesn't mean that you have to go with, like we said, it's able-bodied, so you have to be able to afford... If you could afford it, and if you're of age, then you could go. Mm -hmm. Like, we, mm -hmm. like I think that's a big um, theme throughout all these festivals and about the religion of Islam is they're very considerate also about status as a person you know like if it's hard for you then we don't force you to do it which mm -hmm. is very kind like they're very considerate of people in need mm -hmm. and if you're forgive. in quarantine yeah so can't go exactly <laughs> what exactly is the Eid al-Adha well it is called the festival of the sacrifice it's a festival to commemorate the time that God oh sorry if Eid al if Eid al-Fitr <laughs> wrong is... god wrong god <laughs> Abort, abort. <laughs> if, <laughs> sorry. If Eid al-Fitr is the festival to commemorate the time God revealed the first verses of the Quran to Muhammad, Eid al-Adha, or the festival of sacrifice, is the festival to commemorate Ibrahim's faith and devotion to God. So why is the celebration of someone's devotion called the festival of sacrifice? Well, because the story goes, Ibrahim was once contacted by God in a dream where God asked him to sacrifice his own son to God. Now, being a devout believer and follower of God, Ibrahim went ahead and set up the sacrifice of his own son, Ishmael, to God. But just as Ibrahim was about to swing the axe to kill and sacrifice his son, Ishmael, God stops him and asks him to sacrifice a lamb instead. He says that it God was just telling Ibrahim that it was just a test to test Ibrahim's faith and devotion, and that he passed the test. Now, before any Christians and Jews start hating on Muslims for such a insane story of sacrificing your own son. This story is also part of the Christian and Jewish faith, but just having different names, um, Abraham and Isaac. So it's a wildly common story amongst these three religions that as a test of faith... <laughs> you gotta asking, kill your child. You gotta kill your child. And then God going, psych! <laughs> that was just a test. JK! JK! Sac <laughs> sacrifice the lamb instead. Hello! <laughs> I mean, it's kind of crazy, like, the amount of faith you have that that's God telling you in a dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine dreaming something, be like, oh my god, I gotta sacrifice yeah. my dog. <laughs> <laughs> now, this act of faith and sacrifice is what Eid al-Adha chooses to celebrate, and that's why the name, the festival of the sacrifice. Just like Eid al-Fatir, Eid al-Adha begins with people dressing to the tens and morning prayers. And after praying... Also, just like Eid al-Fatir, you can go visit your dead relatives and also practice in giving alms to the poor and the needy, which, as you mentioned, is a pillar of Islam. You do this all in, like, a, a Prada gown? A what? A Prada gown. A Prada gown. gown. <laughs> in, your, in your Prada gown. You're dressed gown. to the tens. And you're giving uh, money to... I would wear an yeah. Alexander McQueen. <laughs> you know what? Dubai Mall has, like, a like a fashion avenue with like stores i've never ever seen before it's like really like i don't even know what they are they're just not your typical like you know debenhams or like right Champ. it's like i don't know what they Is are it like couture couture stuff? so couture it's like oh, right man. Uh -huh. it's like that, that avenue like it's like a new section of the mall like no one goes there 
and it's oh like it's so bright like <laughs> gold and silver I don't know. dang oh yeah I, I instantly know. they'd be like i smell peasant <laughs> get out <laughs> a, rat. Yeah. a rat no no seriously <laughs> And each store has their own security guard. That's how high dang. high fashion oh, is. Like, I, have, like, I don't even know these names. They're like, it's from Milan. I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> like, the only store that I recognized was Leica. Like a Leica store. Oh. They have yeah. an actual Leica store. That's so cool. Yeah. The like the, the cheapest camera is like $4,000. Like, <gasps> dang. <laughs> Celebrating Ida Adha in style. In style. <laughs> it's like two, <laughs> two months of serve right there. <laughs> I'll have my McQueen gown and my Leica. <laughs> <laughs> my Leica purse. Like, like, no, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just holding the sun. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, it's a little speaker. Oh, cool. Oh. I, thought <laughs> little was, I thought it was, like, thought it was just like a grinder that you had. Oh. <laughs> I guess it does look like a grinder. I have a similar, it's like gold. Oh. Yeah, my friend gave it to me. She's all like, isn't your car speakers fucked? <laughs> Here you go, have a little Bluetooth speaker. I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. But it lasts like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it dies. Might as well keep it plugged then. Yeah, I can't. Oh. <laughs> my cigarette lighter is busted too. Oh. GG. Oh. Yeah. You need to put a generator in your car. <laughs> I do. It's a true relic. <laughs> I just keep breaking it too. <laughs> Hi there. My name is Kanyeki Kamawe and I'm the host of the Represented Podcast. No matter who you are and no matter where you come from, we each have a story to tell. The Represented Podcast explores individuals' life stories with the hope that we can identify with or learn from them. Subscribe and listen to the show on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or even Spotify. You can also check us out on the Geek Happy Network website. That's geekhappynetwork.com. Finally, follow the show on Instagram at Represented Podcast to keep up with the fun stuff. Love to see you there. Peace. Anyway, yes. back, back to Prodigans. Yeah, so after praying, you can visit your dead relatives and practice alms. It was just really nice to see like that in both Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr, you're still trying to provide for those in need while also sharing in the greatness of your own faith. So it's like, I get to be fancy, but I also get to help people be fancy too. Nice. Um, once you complete all of this, and it's off to your friends and family for gift giving and just a big, massive feast. <laughs> Mm. Uh, gifts during this time can be anything from money to clothes it can go f and the festival itself can go anywhere for two to four days depending on your country another similarity of this festival is that you're also not allowed to fast during Eid al-Adha does this one have a multiplier? no there's no okay. multiplier <laughs> not like the other one yeah <laughs> where you Ram fast Ramadan for six days and, and it's a year yeah. <laughs> no, that, you do that you already done that so you're already good for the year right? no you right. don't need to fast right. anymore yeah ever <laughs> well, for the for the year, I guess. But as smorgies, we're here for the food. And when it comes to Muslim celebrations, as we mentioned, Eid al-Hadha is the greater of the festivals. Uh, the highlight of, I guess, the, uh, one big part of Eid al-Hadha is the kurbani, which is the sacrifice. So just like how Ibrahim sacrificed a lamb, so do must all Muslims sacrifice an animal to celebrate Eid al-Adha. This is the kurbani, and it's a... Like we mentioned, sir, this is the Qurbani and it's a requirement for all the Muslims. But of course, there are some exceptions again, just like how there are exceptions for Ramadan when it comes to fasting. The exceptions here are for people who do not have wealth equivalent to 52 and a half tolas of silver, which totals to about $416 Canadian. Um, also, people who are exempted are people who are not of sound mind or children. These exemptions are pretty much also the same exceptions for people who should be giving alms. Right. So again, like here, it's like everything we've seen so far, they're kind of considerate for people who can't afford it and stuff and instead help them out instead of, you know, make them suffer But if you more. just don't want to kill an animal. <laughs> now you, this is where you could also pass off or delegate your kirbani mm -hmm. and getting someone else to do it for you or also just donate it so then it, your, all your kirbani can just go to someone in need instead of for your family. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it comes to animal of choice, it doesn't have to be a lamb like Ibrahim. It can be lamb or sheep or a goat or a cow or a camel. Now, depending on the size of animal, it can count for one person or like a sheep or a goat counts for one person or seven people. So like a cow or a camel can count for a whole family or seven people. Yeah. Sounds and like a bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's just one of those things that are still like old school. Yeah. It, like I was like reading like a story about like how like some like for some kids they have to like see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah you do. Those, especially if you're a boy. It's like Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> you do have to kind of experience it. Like you could pass it off, but that's just more of like in today's world where with the prevalence of like yeah. food for people of privilege, you can just donate your share and have them kill the animal remotely because you can't really it's kind of useless to kill the animal in Canada if you're going to donate it to someone in I don't know like India or something right. so you might as well mm -hmm. pass it off to someone in India but it is kind of still part of the old school tradition for sure that you have to experience the sac you don't have to conduct the sacrifice but you should at least be there for the sacrifice mm -hmm. um, a big part of it is because when you sacrifice the animal you should also recite the prayer of Takir which is Bisim Bismillahi Alu Akbar or essentially in the name of Allah so you you don't have to say it out loud, but you do have to kind of say it as the sacrifice is being made to complete the kurbani. Now, there are also some rules of how or when to sacrifice your animal. One is, of course, the animal has to pass halal. It can't just be any animal. It has to be at least an animal that's halal. Yeah, all those rules which we covered in the last episode. Now, while you're also allowed to prepare or select your animals beforehand, the sacrifice must happen during Eid al-Adha, which is the 10th to the 12th day of that month. The animal has to be in good health, and there's also a long list of different rules of what good health means. It could have things like the animal can't be blind or missing an eye or missing a tail or a horn or having a lame leg or being super fat or super thin. <laughs> and it has to be of a certain age as well. So like if you're sacrificing a camel, it has to be at least five years old. So it's like halal, there's also a lot of rules here. Um, there's also in terms of preparation. So you can only kill or sacrifice the animal with a very sharp knife so as not to make the animal suffer more than it should. Or you can't also sharpen the knife in front of the animal that you're going to slaughter. Or another one with, I found funny is you can't, oh not funny, sorry. Another one is you can't <laughs> slaughter an animal in front of another animal too that you're going to slaughter. So you kind of want to keep them in a separate room, you know, Give them a proper and respectful sacrifice. A clean cut to the throat is usually the best way to kill the animals. Um, make sure it's a deep cut, not a light cut like the blood episode we did m months ago about the Nepalese who would harvest the axe blood and oh my god, only just kind of leave a bleed light it cut. and then we're like, okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> yeah. So not like that. Give it a good deep cut that will kill it for sure instead of no. Another interesting rule that I found was you can't actually skin an animal until it's gone completely cold. So after you kill yeah. it, let it let the soul or its essence leave the body, essentially, is I think the idea there. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it, it's, it's quite like, sure, it's quite a bloodbath, but it is quite respectful to the animals in some ways as well. I don't like this one as much. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but And then once you complete the sacrifice, you split the animal into three parts. You're not allowed to keep the whole animal for yourself. It is a requirement that you give part of it to other people as well. So generally, it's one part to you and your family, the other part to your friends, and the third part to those in need. So like again, it goes back to that whole theme of providing for those in need, which is kind of cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah it is, it is yeah. quite a... <laughs> it's not the happiest <laughs> thing for animals but no <laughs> yeah. it is it is done with the it, belief of it being a holy and ritual it is for the good of god i guess and god yeah. created the animals so so you well, give a part to your friends is it possible to like receive 20 parts yeah i guess <laughs> you have a lot of friends <laughs> pretty you just much. like basically have the whole animal back together <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> frankenstein it like, like i need yeah. a i'll give you life <laughs> i need a butt <laughs> yeah i think this is why like a lot of people tend to just donate their kurbani because then you don't really want to have that much kurbani <laughs> or maybe you do you know it really depends on how you want to party depends on yeah. what you're building yeah <laughs> So when you do yeah. receive your kurbani or your meat, you can cook it however way you wish. I'm assuming if you're Muslim, you just want to adhere to the rules of halal when you cook it. And it's quite, yeah, there's a lot of things you could do with it. Um, oh, no, it's usually like a kebab yeah. or something. Ooh. They like slow yeah. roast kebab. Yeah. 
<laughs> everything mm-hmm. in Dubai is cooked. Yeah, <laughs> it's generally just roasted. You roast the meat and then you get to eat it with a lot of other food too. Because as we mentioned, Eid al Adha is a feast. Kurbani isn't the only food you'd be eating during this festival, as we talked about before. If Eid al Fitr is known as the sweet Eid, Eid al Adha is the savory or salty Eid. The food here will include a massive smorgasbord of savory vegetables and meats from curries, soups, stews, and everything you can imagine. As long as it's halal, I guess. Curry. Yeah, because just like, I mean, similar to Eid al-Fitr, the food served on your table will depend on where you live. Um, so there were, But there will be some overlaps in dishes even between Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Um, one example is ma'amul. Which is a cookie or ball like pastry with dates and nuts. That's kind of common between both mm. festivals and also across different countries. Another one that's common that we heard from during Eid al Fitr is tajin, which actually I found out was named after a pot that it's cooked in. <laughs> the Moroccan mm. tajin. <laughs> is it pot yeah, shape? Well, the, sh- the pot shape is called tajin. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. So that, cool. that, as we mentioned, was a slow-cooked stew with a mixture of meats and vegetables spiced up with cinnamon, saffron, or turmeric with some fruits as well. Fruit? Uh, that one you eat with couscous. Yum. And yeah, sure, Angel, you could eat it with quinoa, too. <laughs> <laughs> quinoa. Quinoa. Yes. Um, quinoa. Yep. Quinoa. <laughs> now, just like the last episode, I can't go through all kinds of food, so I'll just have a few highlights here. One dish you may come across is tur- in Turkey is oruk, which is baked meatballs with walnuts, herbs, spices, bulgur dough, which is and bulgur dough, which is a kind of wheat. Bulgur dough. I heard bulgur dough. <laughs> yeah, me too. Bulgur. B u l g u r. It's like a kind of wheat. Okay. Apparently, um. It gets old really quickly, so you want to cook or cook with it fast. Immediately. But this sounds good. Mm-hmm. Walnuts with meatballs, herbs, and stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. that sounds great. Um, another one that you might see from around different countries is biryani, which is rice dish with chicken rice. and yogurt. And uh, <laughs> if I have to give up beef rendang, I'll probably just go for <laughs> biryani. This sounded so weird, yep. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can have my share. Yeah. <laughs> and in because it's yeah. rice. So in India, it's usually made out of mutton when you serve the biryani. Uh, spicy, rice filled, and super super aromatic. So I don't know. I think you would enjoy eating rice with biryani because it's like a lot of spices and there's a lot of flavors and it just smells. It smells like food cologne. <laughs> 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 but like edible. It's just oh. <laughs> It's so yeah. good. I love like digging mm-hmm. into it because it's like I re- you find chicken yeah. like randomly. Yeah. Like, so it's like the because ch- you have to mix yeah. it first. It's like the chicken episode with it, where you kind of like everything's just cooked together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. I'll try it. I will try I, it. I know there's like <laughs> a African fusion restaurant in downtown Simba's that has really good biryani. Yeah. Oh, I know where yeah. it is. And another dish you may find in India is nali nihari, which is slow cooked lamb or beef cooked with its bone marrow and spiced with coriander leaves. I think I could go with this one too. I don't know. I really like bone marrow, so this one would be really good. It's fatty, fatty, <laughs> fatty delicious. delicious. Just like you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know the difference between coriander and cilantro. It's the same. Coriander is the plant. They, I thought it's the they same thing. The same. Usually, yeah, it's the is same it? thing. Oh, okay. They usually refer to coriander when it's in seed form, but coriander is a cilantro plant. Yeah. Same thing. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming neither of you have that weird cilantro problem. I like cilantro. Where some people... Yeah. Okay. If some people have like a gene that makes cilantro taste yeah. like soap to them. Oh, that's yeah. me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like oh, cilantro. Oh, shit. Oh. Hello, hello. Vancouver cool. loves... He said that would yeah, sound there's a lot of <laughs> Vancouver so, loves cilantro. You love I ordered like like maybe like a soup and it just like they dumped the whole oh, that's gross. Like, plant in there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and the whole thing tastes like soap to you. <laughs> yeah. It does. Cilantro is good in like small doses. Yeah. It mounts. Yeah. I think I ate too much Mexican food to not right. like cilantro. Because <laughs> you think they like cilantro here? Yeah. 
wait till you have some like yeah, Mexican so food. Like, it's like in everything. And I know, like, I know Chinese. Some cuisine in Chinese use a lot of car- coriander seeds. That one is like so crazy because it numbs your no, tongue when you have too much coriander seeds. Mm. <laughs> Num tongue. Yeah. You have some num tongue. I don't know. I'd have some num tongue for you. Num tongue. Num tongue. That should be a video episode where we just eat coriander seeds. Let's see how how much we need to eat to sound like this. And then. Lastly, in the Middle East, a common dish you may see there is roast lamb. I got hungry. Mm, yum, That's yum. my yeah. favorite. Um, a common, another dish there is makluba, which is, it's vegetables, meat, and rice layered in a pot. And you flip it around, and then you pull the pot out, so it's like a cake with rice, vegetables, mm-hmm. and meat on top of each other. Mm-hmm. So they're all cooked. Yeah, I've seen that, actually. It's yeah. It sounds good, because then it's like an upside down it like cake. absorbs all the flavors. It's a yeah. rice cake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can see that, but it's not a hundred layer no. cake. <laughs> this one, this one, you cook all together instead of one layer at a time. <laughs> not in twenty different easy bake yeah. ovens. Nope. <laughs> You're gonna blow your yeah. power. <laughs> That's why we have a gaffer, right? <laughs> For the easy bakes. P- plug it into outside. Every single, <laughs> every single outlet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so yeah, you can see with Eid al- had I'd had like there are some similarities with Eid al Fatir, but it is very much more focused on sitting down and feasting. Like feast yeah, style. instead of I think Eid al Fatir yeah. has a lot of more social. You talk with your neighbors, you give each other sweets and stuff. This one is like you give your neighbor their meat, and then you go home with your meat, and you just like meet. Oh, eat your meat all night <laughs> ain't no party like a meat, meat party for meat. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Mm. So what do you guys think I th- do you prefer Eid al Adha food or Eid al Fatir food they're they're both the same yeah. I first I just Eid al Adha like passes over me because it's like it happens during school time for right. me it's like last week of summer or school time oh. so it's like we just usually a holiday but then it's almost like either either for tear like it's just we're just doing <laughs> <it> again <laughs> there's fireworks again and nice more celebration. yeah this one i was i had very little background about it so i was like very surprised but i was like i knew it was the festival of sacrifice i didn't know if it was like this hard right oh so you got <laughs> to see a lot of the sacrifices too i, I didn't get to see no. it no not, not in dubai i think those i have no information right. about it because it's the everything in dubai is halal but i just don't know where like right or maybe if you didn't go where? to the vip line yeah. of the butcher you would see it <laughs> <laughs> you can't no. be in the back room that's not where it happens <laughs> but there are farms there right. are certain farms where you can like you can pick you can pick oh, the cool. animal that you want and you just pay for it oh nice because i remember when i was young we went to like a cow farm where like so it's gonna be r- pick the really one bad. that you yeah. want to eat. No, it was, no, no, no. It's it was a field trip. It wasn't like yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not like yeah. Betty over there. <laughs> Betty with the earring. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Betty looks especially plump and Tinder juicy for animal pickings. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I just remembered it. I was like, we actually went to a cow farm right. when I was younger, but it wasn't like anything about Eid. It was just like we, they just wanted us to see okay, a farm. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's this the thing that a lot of people are fighting against. It's like they were like, I didn't understand it at, at that yeah. time, but I guess in Dubai it's it's just the way yeah. it is. Fair enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I personally prefer, I think, mm. the savory foods mm. more than the sweet foods. True. True. Depends on the day oh. for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I want all the sugar. Sometimes I want all the salt. So. <laughs> So the spam day was definitely, yeah. you're in, you're in a sugar mood now because of the salt, <laughs> all the salt you yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah. I would I definitely go for Ramadan because it's like thirty days yeah. of fun. 
I thought it was really. I, it was. Really yeah, funny. I think for a lot, of, it seems like Ramadan isn't like this soul sucking month. Mm-hmm. It's more of a you know. It's yeah, sure we're fasting, but we're also eating. I don't know. I feel like you're just. It's like you get to like, as I was growing older, it's like people are like more open. Yeah. Like it's just like it's just like a joke. Right. Because you, you can't smoke, yeah. right? Because like for my uncle, they used to have like a designated smoking. Oh, okay. Area. So they would just like. They would just like maybe just stand there and not smoke and just like <laughs> just stand take, there. Take, take 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 your smoking break. Yeah. Oh, like, cool. <laughs> just bond over the fact that yeah. they can't like smoke and eat. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, because like, you're still um, getting the social rewards, yeah. just not the nicotine. Sounds healthier. Because like I, it's not like <laughs> it's actually yeah. It, the withdrawal is really yeah. Bad. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. Yeah, for my uncle, his like tradition is like as soon as you hear the mosque and the prayer he just like starts like, lighting <laughs> his, his cigarette. you can he already has it in his mouth and he's waiting. just like waiting with the lighter the sunset yet no okay yeah. oh, now. okay <laughs> he was like the happiest person at the end <laughs> that's funny that was his iftar right. yeah. once you get your nicotine fix you're like yeah yeah. yeah fair yeah. enough and people were very respectful yeah. like for us it was uh what is it gonna say uh it's like it's not like they just tell the general public that it people shouldn't really be drinking yeah. water in public you can do it yeah at home if, if you're not muslim but just, yeah when you're around muslim it's like be respectful yeah that's it. cool yeah you probably don't want to be walking around with a big ass cheeseburger during the day yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair enough yeah that's yeah, fun yeah um and yeah just as you eat that cheeseburger on yeah. the dl and you eat it early in the morning you walk around yeah, with cheeseburger eat. stank oh man <laughs> everyone jealous you have like dribbles of sauce right here You're like ah, I don't know, you don't see it I was, it was my no <laughs> it's my suhoor okay don't judge me <laughs> yeah uh, well, well, like every episode, we do find out if it's healthy or good. This is pretty much just the same as the last two of the series. I'd say it's healthy to the soul. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of... It's spiritually... Yeah, it seems like a lot of this yeah. food here is very heavy on spices and seasoning, so I wouldn't say it's healthy to eat this it forever. Sounds good to me. <laughs> right, it's good for your soul. As long yeah. as it's meat. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's good or not, well, I just had beef rendang and I'm addicted to it. So, yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, that concludes our three part series on the Eids. The Eids of March. Well, it's May this year. And I guess it's going to be different. Anyway, it's different every year. <laughs> May. <laughs> At some time. Wait, it's if gonna... it gets like earlier every year, yeah. right? Maybe in yeah. 2030, it's the Eids of March. Since it's shorter. Yeah. 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 30 no, it's usually like that. it's usually between may and like uh like july it's usually those yeah those months but but it moves every oh, okay. year so maybe eventually it'll reach december yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, i would be very concerned the moon doesn't like <laughs> take that long <laughs> yeah it's usually it's usually like between yeah. summertime what's right. also interesting the long is days yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's interesting is that like every day the Ramadan time gets earlier. Right. So it's like usually like sun sundown is at seven twenty. The next day it's seven eighteen right. and goes like to like seven ten. So it's, it's just a guy calling. It's just getting hungry. You just have to keep getting earlier. <laughs> the guy calling it is like yeah I can see it now we're good. You get like four <laughs> minutes hungrier yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like the guy in Dubai That's was just good. cheating it. <laughs> <laughs> the closer you are to the equator the less time yeah. change it is uh move to yeah. the equator it's true good call good time to good place to be a muslim in the equator yeah <laughs> yeah so that's that's the series yay, yay. the trill the, the trilogy, trilogy. <laughs> quadrangle the trilogy <laughs> the trilogy <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, Yay, yeah. Thanks Bye. for having me. <laughs> Yay. So yeah. Bye. All right.
This, this is Smorgasbord. Have a ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network or email us at team at geekhappynetwork.com. We'd love to hear from our fellow Smorgies. This show is created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico.